What's new in accessibility at Google? Hi, everyone. It's Laura Allen again, Head of Strategy and Programs for Accessibility and Disability Inclusion here at Google. Welcome back to another episode of What's New in Google Accessibility, a series where we share the latest product and feature updates that help make Google more accessible for everyone. We've got a lot of great things to tell you about in this episode, so let's get started. First up, Workspace. Earlier this year, Google Meet expanded its language support for captions, adding 11 more languages for closed captions. That brings the total number of supported languages to an impressive 87. Also in Workspace, you can now pin important messages in Google Meet. When you pin a message, it stays at the top of the chat for everyone to access, even if they join the meeting late. So you can keep important information, like links to presentations, displayed prominently for everyone in the meeting. And for Workspace screen reader and keyboard users, we recently published five new Help Center articles about navigating apps like Chat, Docs, and Drive, and ways to take advantage of collaboration and editing features. Moving on to Android news, we're excited to announce that text-free mode is now available in the Look to Speak Android app. Look to Speak enables you to use your eyes to select from a menu of pre-written, customizable phrases and have them spoken aloud. With this new text-free mode update, you can also use personalized emojis, symbols, and photos to activate speech. And big news for Android developers. Last year, we launched Project Gameface, an open source, hands-free gaming mouse for PC. Now, the project is available for Android devices via GitHub. This release opens up new possibilities for developers to create more accessible applications. Leveraging the Android Accessibility Service and Google's MediaPipe, Project Gameface for Android provides a framework to translate head movements into cursor controls and facial gestures into on-screen actions. We're excited for developers to explore its potential. We're also expanding accessibility features on Google Maps. Maps now has accessibility information for more than 50 million places, thanks to contributions from local guides, business owners, and members of the Maps community. Look for the wheelchair icon, now available on Android and iOS, as well as desktop, to find places with wheelchair accessible entrances. And in cases where our contributors have confirmed that a place doesn't have an accessible entrance, the wheelchair icon will have a strike through. As a reminder, under the About tab in Maps, you can check out more details about accessible restrooms, parking, and seating. And as a bonus, when you're viewing a location on mobile, you can now filter reviews to find specific information about wheelchair accessibility. Business owners can also show one of their location's accessibility features by adding the AuraCast attribute to their business profile. AuraCast allows venues like theaters, gyms, places of worship, and auditoriums to broadcast enhanced or assistive audio directly to AuraCast-enabled Bluetooth hearing aids, earbuds, and headphones. Our final round of updates highlights some of the incredible work that's happening on Chromebooks and the Chrome browser. We recently adjusted and enhanced the Chromebook's built-in screen magnifier. We know that many people use a combination of magnification and spoken feedback, depending on their vision. Now, when you hear text read aloud using select to speak with the magnifier on, it will automatically follow the words so you don't lose your place. Googlers with disabilities make critical content. And you can change the size of your mouse cursor in slider settings to make it even bigger or smaller based on your preferences. You can also turn off the blinking text cursor, which can be helpful for people with photosensitive seizure triggers or cognitive differences. In more Chromebook news, for the first time ever, Chrome Fox screen reader users will be able to read inaccessible PDFs in the native Media Gallery app, even if the PDFs are not accessible or properly tagged. This also means that users can read PDFs offline without needing to go on a browser. And because nearly two thirds of web pages lack proper image labels, we're also enhancing Chrome's machine learning generated text descriptions. Now, screen reader users can get more accurate image labels when they visit web pages. This update is available across Chrome on Chrome OS, Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android. Last but not least, we're excited to share that we've improved the Chrome OS gaming experience, especially for users with motor impairments. While many mobile games rely on using a touchscreen to navigate and experience a game, the new game dashboard in Chrome OS allows you to map keyboard keys to those touchscreen controls, which makes playing any Android game on your Chromebook even more accessible. 
And if you use a keyboard with programmable switch buttons, like the 8-bit do, you can dive into a whole new world of Android games. That wraps up this episode of What's New in Google Accessibility. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to check out our YouTube video description, where we've linked to more details about many of these updates. If you want to learn more, sign up for our newsletter at g.co slash a11y slash news, or by clicking the link in the description of this video. Until next time. What's new in accessibility at Google?